Well, good morning, everyone. We want to welcome you to Living Waters Chapel, and uh, we want to invite you to stand and worship with us. We're going to open in a word of prayer this morning. Dear God, we thank you for just an amazing opportunity to gather together and worship you. God, I pray this morning that our praise and worship would be uh, an honor to you, God, that it would be a worthy sacrifice, God, that we would worship you in spirit and in truth. And we trust this morning that you will speak to us through your word and uh, that we'll be blessed through that this morning. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Everyone needs compassion. Everyone needs compassion. Love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness. The kindness of a Savior. The hope of nations. Let's sing Savior. Oh, Savior. my soul find rest 
It's when the oceans rise and thunders roar I will soar with you above the storm Father, you are king over the flood I will be still and know you are God I will be still and know you are God I will be still and know you The chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. O oh, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could fathom such boundless grace. The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken. The cross has spoken. I am
silence the roaring lion declare the grave has no claim on me oh jesus yours is the victory surrounded by his enemies God that we would resonate with the words that David wrote God that uh, the same thing that his heart was crying out God that that would be our heart's cry that we would look to you as our help because you are our living hope you're not a hope just for yesterday or just for the future but God you're our hope today We trust in you, whatever situation we find ourselves in. God, we trust in you alone. We thank you, God, for who you are and all you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Take some time this morning to greet one another. Let people know that they're welcome here. and God's richest blessings upon each and every one who has come to worship and give praise to the Lord and those that have joined us online uh, viewing our online service we welcome you as well we want to extend a very uh, sincere welcome to anyone who might be worshiping whether here in the sanctuary or online for the very first time we thank you for uh, being with us and uh, worshiping together if uh, you are here for the first time and worship uh, here in the sanctuary, if you want to take a Connect card, those are found in the pockets of the chair backs. There's one near you. And just take a few moments to fill that out, and you can either put that in the 
giving boxes on your way out of the sanctuary after the service or take it to the Connect Center. We have a gift bag for everyone who is with us uh, in in person worship this morning, as well as those that are worshiping for the first time online. Please message us, let us know, contact us that you have uh, joined us and worshiped with us this morning. Anyone that would have questions or desire more information about Living Waters Chapel, please let us know how we can get in contact with you, and we will follow up to provide answers and information that would be helpful to you. By way of announcements, we do want to mention a few things out of our bulletin from this morning on announcements. Uh, Transform Men's Ministry. Men, there are several opportunities coming up here in the month of July uh, for us to get together. And uh, the the Transform Men's Ministry is sponsoring a Harrisburg Senators baseball game. And this is uh, scheduled for July the 23rd at 6 p.m. They need to know if you are interested and planning to purchase tickets by July the 6th. And so there is a deadline for the sign up for that. And uh, please pay attention to those details. And then the last Saturday, July 30th, will be our men's breakfast at Heisey's Diner here just a few miles from the church. And so uh, you can please sign up for that as well so we can uh, uh, have the restaurant set up appropriately for uh, seating. The ladies are not to be outdone. On Saturday, July the 30th, the Women's Refresh Ministry is sponsoring an ice cream trip, and this is going to be to Fox Meadows Creamery uh, down in the Ephrata area, and uh, they're leaving the church here at 3 p.m. on Saturday, July 30th. So ladies, make sure you sign up, and uh, you can be a part of that activity and time of fellowship together. Then we want to uh, just draw your attention in our bulletin. We are emphasizing our Connect Group ministry here at Living Waters Chapel. Several of our home Connect Groups do have openings. If uh, you as an individual or couple would like to be a part of one of these, uh, please fill out a form. There's uh, an attached form to the announcement bulletin, a little two-sided kind of an information survey type thing. And uh, if you would be interested in being a part of one of these groups, Just uh, put your contact information and and when the best time is for us to reach out to you, and we can fill you in on the details uh, of uh, getting to be a part of one of these groups. And also there is a new group for parents of uh, high school and young adult age, college age uh, students, and that will be starting in August. And so uh, parents, if that sounds like something that would be of interest to you, again, you can indicate that on this form and we will get back in contact with you with the specific details for that Connect group. We do want to thank each and every one for their faithfulness in giving unto the Lord. It is your faithfulness to God that allows us to continue ministry here, not only within our church, but beyond our church to our community, and certainly beyond to the world, uh, where the missionaries and those that we sponsor are taking the gospel of Jesus Christ. May God bless you for your faithfulness in giving and serving God and worshiping him in that manner. Amen. At this time, Pastor Chris is coming to share God's word. God bless him as he comes. Well, good morning. I trust that you are all doing very well, and I trust that you are having a great day in the Lord, and once again, we welcome you, and we are grateful that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. One of the things that I would like you to be aware of and to be in prayer for this week is our teenagers and some young adults will be serving as chaperones for their week of youth camp and that will be taking place in Carlisle at our conference center and we just want to be Uh, keeping those uh, students and and leaders in prayer, and that the Lord would just do a great work in their hearts and in their lives. This morning we are continuing uh, with our uh, study of looking at uh, select passages uh, from, from the book of Psalms. And this morning we are going to look at Psalm 56. And And I've simply just uh, titled this uh, message, Trusting in the Trials. Trusting in the Trials. The reality is that each and every one of us 
are going to face uh, devastating circumstances in our lives. Difficult and, and challenging uh, circumstances will, will happen to each and every one of us through, throughout our lives. And, and many of our hardships and difficulties are a result of trouble finding us. Uh, they're just, you know, life unfolds, things uh, happen to us, and, and we find ourselves experiencing hardships and difficulties just as a result of life itself happening. However, uh, many of our hardships, many of our difficulties are the result of our own making or the result of our own choosing. And as we're going to find out in Psalm chapter 56, this was the case with David. Uh, David was uh, in, the, in, the, in the midst of a, a difficult and challenging uh, situation. David was innocent of, of, of any wrongdoing doing towards Israel's king, Saul was viciously seeking David's life. Uh, however, an unwise decision made David's bad situation even worse. And I would encourage you uh, to take a look at 1 Samuel chapter 21 and, and uh, look, through, look through 1 Samuel 21 to see uh, what was taking place and, and what was happening and, and why uh, David was experiencing uh, what he was experiencing. I'm just going to just give us a little bit of an overview of, of what was uh, taking place. But David was desperate to escape uh, Saul who was trying to kill David. And, and, and in the midst of him trying to escape uh, Saul, he foolishly fled to Gath. Now you might say, what is the significance of, of Gath? Well, the significance of Gath is this, that it, 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 it was the home of Goliath. And if, if that wasn't uh, bad enough, David was carrying the sword of the monstrous giant whom he had recently slain. And at first glance, we might wonder what caused David to do such an ill-advised thing. David had a plan in his mind, and in his mind it seemed like a, a pretty good plan. It seemed like uh, something that would work. Uh, any of you ever have a, a plan that seemed like a pretty good plan, that it was going to work, and then you uh, find out, wow, this was, uh, this was not a good plan. This was, this was not a well-thought-out uh, way to get things done. We've, we've all found ourselves uh, facing those kind, of, those kind of situations. So David thought that Saul would never suspect him of fleeing to Gath, a major city of Philistia. You see, the Philistines were Israel's sworn enemy. And Saul had declared David to be his enemy. Because he and the Philistines were both Saul's enemies, David hoped that Achish, king of Gath, would embrace him as an ally. Making friends with the enemy. Trying to cozy up with the enemy, if you will. Sadly, David's logic was seriously flawed and his plan backfired. In 1 Samuel chapter 21, verse 13, things escalated to a point where verse 13 tells us this in, re in reference to David. So he pretended to be insane in their presence, and while he was in their hands, he acted like a madman, making marks on the doors of the gate and letting saliva run down his beard. This is 
what David's plan had, had led him to do. You see, under the intense pressure of a threatening situation, David made a very unwise decision that placed his life in even greater danger. You see, in our lives, we will face frightening, sometimes dangerous situations. We will also encounter painful hardships that will leave us feeling helpless and hopeless. And it brings us to Psalm 56. This psalm is a meditation worthy of remembrance. Let's pray. Father, over these next few moments, as we read the words of David, he has penned these words from a situation that he had experienced in his life earlier. So God, as we read through these verses of Scripture, as we hear David's heart, may we allow your word to speak to our hearts and speak to our minds. I ask that your Holy Spirit would reveal to us what we need to see, what we need to hear, what we need to learn, and what we need to apply to our lives. God, I ask that you would draw us closer to you, and in drawing us closer to you, may we hear you speak to us and how we can apply these words, these thoughts, to our lives. For your honor and your glory, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In verses 1 and 2 of Psalm 56, David cries out to God. Verse number 1, he says, Be merciful to me, O God, for men hotly pursue me all day long. They press their attack. My slanderers pursue me all day long. And many are attacking me in their pride. Just as David faced attacks from people, just as as David was boldly attacked, there will be times in our lives where where people will attack us. People people may attack us. They they will attack us uh, with, with with their words. Hopefully we won't be attacked physically, but that is, that is something that, that could happen as well. You see, when we are facing the difficult consequences of unwise actions or decisions, we need to turn to the Lord for help. You see, there are times in in our lives where, where, quite frankly, we have made some pretty poor decisions and some pretty poor choices. And we come to the realization where we say, God, I've messed things up. I need your help. I need your, your grace. I need your mercy. And when we cry out to him, What does God say to us? Hey, you got yourself into this mess. You're on your own. Does God say that to us? No. He hears us. He helps us. He comforts us. And He lifts us up. Yes, there are times where where we must suffer and deal with the consequences of poor choices and poor decisions. But never does God say to us, Hey, pal, you're on your own. You got yourself into this mess. You can get yourself out of this mess. You see, God is gracious and merciful. He 
enjoys. He delights in assisting us when we least deserve his help. You see, our greatest and most fundamental problem is sin. And sin is of our own choosing and our own making. We sin because we foolishly choose to do so. But God has gone to great lengths to rescue us from our sin. God loves each and every one of us so much that he gave his son to save us. Paul reminds us in Romans 8.32 that God did not spare his own son, but God delivered him up for all of us. How will he not with him also freely give us all things. You see, God cares about each and every one of us enough that he was willing to sacrifice his own son. So when we cry out to God and when we ask God for help, He is not going to withhold his help from us. You see, he invites us to boldly request his grace and his mercy. And he is available when no one else will help us. And he can do what no one else can do. And we should never hesitate to call upon God. So as we look at our own lives this day, do we find ourselves in a situation where we need to cry out for God's help? Whether it's a a situation or a circumstance in our lives that has come to us by just life itself unfolding? Or is it something of our own choosing? If it's, is it something that we have brought upon ourselves? You see, it's just not enough, though, for us or for David to cry out to God. Verses 3 and 4 suggest that there is a confession of confidence. Verse 3, when I am afraid, I will trust in you. Verse 4, in God whose word I praise, in God I trust, I will not be afraid. What can mortal man do to me? So even though people may strike fear in us, even though situations and circumstances around us may strike fear within us, we must trust in God. Whether we realize it, whether we recognize it, whether we want to admit it or not, fear is one of the most powerful emotions we face. And it causes people to react in different ways. So how do people react When fear is in their lives. Fear compels some people to run away or hide. We call this the flight. I'm out of here. I just want out of here. I don't want anything to do with this. Fear completely paralyzes other people. It causes them 
to just remain frozen. They're stuck. They're stuck in one place. They can't move. Others are provoked to fight when they are afraid. There's the flight and then there's the fight. So when we experience fear, we may want to run and hide. We, we may want to fight. We, we may experience being stuck. And those are the natural human responses to fear. But the scriptural response to fear, the biblical response to fear, is faith. Is faith. A phrase made popular over the past few years has been faith over fear. When we are overcome with fear, we should confess as David confessed in verse number four, in God I have put my trust. Whether we realize or recognize it or not, God is greater than than any force that threatens us. And for that reason, we need to confront fear with an unwavering faith in the promises of God's Word. When you and I experience fear, we need to be Combating that with our faith, with our trust in God. And we also need to be reading, studying, and applying the written word of God to our lives. In verses 5 through 7. David makes a complaint against his evil enemies. Verse 5 says this, All day long they twist my words. They are always plotting to harm me. They conspire, they lurk, they watch my steps, eager to take my life. On no account let them escape In your anger, O God, bring down the nations. We've all experienced times in our lives when when we were discerning that people were plotting against us. There are times that, that people will twist our words. They may plot harm against us. They may try to set up traps so that we can trip and fall and and fail. So people are going to plot against us. And as David was experiencing people plotting against him, he began to ask God for justice. You see, there are times in our lives where we ask God for justice. We have been wronged. We have been we have been hurt. There are people are plotting against us, and, and we are asking. God for justice. 
Sometimes that, that justice will occur on this earth. There are other times where we are going to need to wait until the very end for justice to occur. But we want justice to take place now. There are things that that bother us. There are things that disturb us. Injustices in life. You see, David prayed that God would not allow his enemies to get away with their evil actions. We pray that God would not allow enemies to get away with evil actions. Having cried out to God for mercy, David now asked the Lord to deal with his enemies. The reality is the crimes of Saul and his men against David were serious. In a desperate attempt to escape their relentless pursuit of him, David had unintentionally placed himself in an additional danger by fleeing to the nation of Philistia, the arch enemy of Israel. Frustrated, And exhausted from his stressful ordeal, David called on God to remember his sorrows and to bring his enemies to justice. When I look back, over life, when I examine poor choices and poor decisions that I have made, many times they have occurred when I have been frustrated and exhausted. Why? Because I become restless. There are times that we try and take matters into our own hands. And when we take matters into our own hands, more than, more times than not, we're going to make those situations Better or worse? I don't know how your track record has been, but my needle tends to lean toward making things worse. When I become restless, when I make choices and decisions out of frustration and exhaustion, Things aren't moving quite the way we think they should be or or we don't think they're moving at all. So, So we try to help God out. We try to move things along. What is God saying to us? He's saying, hey, I need you to trust me. Trust me. Trust my words. Verses 8 through 11. David experiences confidence in the power of God. Record my lament. List my tears on your scroll. Are they not in your record? Then my enemies will turn back when I call for help. But this I will know that God is for me. In God... Whose word I praise. In the Lord. Whose word I praise. In God I trust. 
I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? You see, David asked God to keep keep his sorrow and his tears ever before him. You see, when others sin against us or or hurt us deeply, we can be comforted by the knowledge that God sees our pain and keeps a record of our sorrow. The image here is, appears to be of God collecting our tears. And this idea should be very precious to people who are hurting. God sees our pain. God sees the tears that you shed. The reality is is that we will face some type of persecution for our faith in Jesus. We may deal with slander or false accusations. We may experience being uh, rejected by, by friends or family because of our faith in Jesus. Some people across the world face imprisonment for their faith in Jesus. Others experience a loss of employment because of their stand for Jesus. Others pay the ultimate price. They lay down their lives. They give their lives in serving the Lord. You see, David expressed his confidence in God. And David reaffirms his faith and trust in God's word. David praised God. He praised him because of the promises that God had made were trustworthy and reliable. And God had proved himself true to his word in David's life. And the reality is the same for each and every one of us. That we can praise God because God's promises are trustworthy and they are reliable. God has proven himself over and over to us. Through his word. You see, David addressed God here as the Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah. The only time in this psalm he addresses him as the Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah. And he emphasizes God's faithfulness to his covenant and to his people. Today, He is our Lord. He is your Lord. He is faithful to His covenant. He is faithful to the promises that He has given to each and every one of us. Because David trusted in the Lord, he again declared that he was not afraid of those who opposed him. And in verses 12 and 13, David makes a personal commitment. I am under vows to you, O God. I will present my thank offerings to you, for you have delivered me from death and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. You see, David praised God for his faithfulness, And reaffirmed his vows to God. David praised God in advance for delivering him from his enemies. You see, genuine faith 
It's so certain about God's faithfulness that it rejoices before God acts. It considers something done, although it has not yet been done. You see, that's what genuine faith does. That's what a person does when they are exercising great faith. God, I don't see it yet, but I'm going to, I'm going to praise you anyway. I'm going to give you thanks. I'm going to rejoice because of your faithfulness, even though you have not acted to this point. You see, when we desperately need God's help, we often make vows or commitments to him. How many of us have said this to God? God, I will, if you get me out of this, God, I will never do this again. You ever been there? You've ever made that statement? When we are saying that, we are making a vow. We are, without saying, I promise, that's what we're doing. We're pleading, we're, we're begging God, God, if you, if you get me out of this, I, I... And then what do we find ourselves doing? We find ourselves going back if we don't allow God to deal with our heart. You see, it's one thing to ask God to get us out of a situation and a circumstance. It's another thing for us to ask God to deal with our heart, to deal with a particular sin. We must be careful to fulfill these promises. We shouldn't make such commitments as an attempt to secure God's assistance to get us out of a situation or circumstance Rather, they should be the expression of our gratitude to him for his great mercy and grace. You see, God is faithful to us even when we act foolishly or make unwise decisions. But it is much better for us when we walk in the wisdom of God's word And the leadership of his spirit. When we walk in the wisdom of God's word. And the leadership of his spirit. You and I can avoid the painful consequences. Of foolish decisions. As I bring my thoughts to a close this morning. In Psalm 56. We learn that during trials, during difficulty, during adversity, we must trust God. God did not promise that we will not experience adversity. Nowhere in Scripture do we find God promising that life is going to be smooth, it's going to be easy, there's not going to be any challenges, there's not going to be any setbacks. However, what we do find throughout Scripture is that God promises to be with us during the adversity, during the challenges, during the difficulties. You see, many times we we pray and we ask God, God, remove me from this adversity. God, remove me from this difficulty. God, I don't want to experience this. God, I don't want to go through this. But if you recall the experience of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, When King Nebuchadnezzar says, I see four, four in the fire. And the fourth appears to be the Son of God. 
So when we find ourselves in the adversity, when we find ourselves in the difficult and challenging circumstance and situation, and we are not delivered, we are not removed from that situation and circumstance, realize and recognize, have awareness that God is right there with you. And He will see you through the difficulty and the adversity. And as we trust God, we will experience the truth of His promise. And just like David, we will praise His Word. So this morning, whether you're here in person or whether you're viewing online, you may find yourself in the midst of a storm of adversity, of challenge. I would encourage you to put into practice Psalm 56. Allow me to pray with you and for you. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth that is in your word. And God, there may be individuals this morning who find themselves in difficult and challenging circumstances. God, maybe life has just unfolded around them and they are caught up in the challenges and the difficulties of life. Maybe others, it is because of poor choices and poor decisions that they have made. God, may we cry out to you, knowing that you will hear us and help us. May we have confidence in your word, experiencing faith over fear. God, may we trust in your promises, trust your word, knowing that they are true, knowing that they are yes and amen. God, may we have confidence in who you are and the ability to see us through to give us the victory that we need. So God, help us to trust you. So God, we give you our circumstance. We give you our situation. God, we know that you see our hurt. You see our pain. And God, you do not waste that pain. God, you see our tears. And God, we are praying for your justice to take place. Your righteousness to take place. So God, we trust your plans. We trust your purposes. I pray this prayer of blessing over you. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because of you, Jesus, and the hope of heaven, we believe and we know that the best is yet to come. Amen. Online audience, I trust that you will have a great day and a great week in the Lord.